Hello, thank you for joining us. We are SIF, the leader in digital trust and safety. My name is Jeff Soxagawa, and joining me today is my fellow trust and safety architect, Brittany Allen. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Jeff, and hi, everybody. Now, we're all sitting, it, it's the holiday season, and we're all thinking about last minute gifts for friends and loved ones. I can tell you, um, you know, when I think about last minute gifts, it's awfully gift cards, right? Just so easy to pick up at the register. But unfortunately, easy for me to pick up, also for fraudsters to pick up. Brittany, can you tell us maybe some scams, insights about fraud as it relates to gift cards? Yes. So to do that, let's kick it off with the data. Uh, the FTC found that gift cards are the number one payment method of choice for scammers, which resulted in a reported $148 million worth of loss to consumers in 2021. There's a lot of reasons that gift cards would be preferred by scammers, some of those being that they lack proper security features, they can be difficult for merchants to shut off even if fraud has been reported, and many consumers don't spend the funds right away, giving fraudsters a lot of time to use those cards. But it's also interesting for us to look into the different types of gift card fraud, because it's it might not all be what you're thinking. The primary sort of example being buying gift cards with stolen credit cards. Of course, that does happen. But there's also um, the attack method of doing account takeover or an ATO on a user's account and using their stored payment method therein to buy gift cards. There's also gift card refund or return fraud, where a fraudster will make a purchase with a stolen credit card, very quickly return the item, getting the refund issued onto a gift card, which is something that they can then use for a longer period of time than they might have been able to use that stolen credit card. Then uh, for consumers, there are even some risks beyond those to the merchant, including physical gift card tampering. So the idea of a physical gift card hanging up in store, waiting for someone to purchase it and then activate it, if fraudsters are able to manipulate or access the number on the back of that card and just sit there and wait for funds to be added to it, then they could quickly spend it before the recipient of that gift could ever unwrap or receive that gift card number. Along that way, there's a lot of communication that we also see, a lot of chatter on the uh, deep and dark web about gift cards. There will be multiple channels and groups dedicated to coupon fraud or to gift card fraud. And not only are they sharing methods about how to purchase or get your hands on these gift cards, but they're also selling them. Going back to that first example of using stolen credit cards to buy gift cards, they have a marketplace there where they're able to, to sell those and learn how to sell them to unsuspecting consumers who may then not be able to you know, buy whatever they wanted with that gift card. This is just sort of a, a repeating cycle. Absolutely. Yeah. Two quick thoughts there. <laughs> you know, I think oftentimes with fraud, we focus on credit cards, right? Because it's like, hey, there's a $20,000 limit and fraudsters are trying to tap all of that. Good anecdote is the value that you pay for for gift cards, right? So fraudsters will happily extract fifty, hundred dollars you know? It's not as splashy as 20000 but still something they want to take. And then secondly, yeah, exactly right on, it's the old axiom, right? If it's too good to be true, it probably is, right? So if you find a gift card that's half off, maybe ask your question, should I be getting it for that price? But, you know... What can merchants and consumers do, Brittany, acknowledging all of these different fraud attacks and attempts that are happening in the market today? So for consumers, it's a good idea to try to use your gift cards quickly. And if you can't, to at least check the balance as a gift giver. You also might want to check the balance of a card before you hand it over to your niece or your nephew or your godson. And the longer they sit uh, unused, just know that at that point in time, they are vulnerable to fraud. And then for both merchants and for consumers, take any steps that you can to protect user accounts from account takeover, because it's not just the stolen uh, payment methods or the stored payment methods rather on file within these accounts that are vulnerable. It is also loyalty points or miles or any other type of point there that could be difficult for a merchant to return into an account or is something that the consumer might not even notice has been spent until months and months and months later. Yeah, absolutely. Not to go like full 360 on this, but oftentimes loyalty points um, can be converted to gift cards themselves, either for mm -hmm. the institution where the compromise happened, or especially with partner programs. Think of the travel industry, right? Hey, I might be able to translate this to a large online retailing, for example. So something to keep an eye on. 
Brittany, thank you for your time. To our viewers, thank you for your time as well. Um, if you want some additional information, you can always visit us at SIF.com. And if you visit us this month, you'll see our newly released Q4 Digital Trust and Safety Index Report. Check that out. And again, thank you for your time today.